Why are INFJs and INFPs so anxious? Is it just the way we are? Which is what I hear from a lot of my clients and students. This is just the way I am. I can't help it. There's no solution. Or can we do something about it? Well, for INFJs and INFPs, anxiety has a deeper root. For INFJ and INFP personality types, anxiety comes from energetic overwhelm. Hi everyone, today I'm talking about INFJs and INFPs and anxiety, which is such a big topic for us. Most INFJ personality types and most INFP personality types suffer from some form of anxiety. Now this is something we know about ourselves. This is a known quantity. What we don't usually know is why, what is the root cause of it? Uh, we tend to experience anxiety in all different ways as well. Some of us experience catastrophic thinking where there always seems to be another disaster around the corner, something that could go wrong. Some of us overthink. This is one of the main forms of anxiety that hits INFJ personality types especially is the overthinking where we're constantly worrying about the future, even staying up at night worrying about the future. Some of us feel low grade anxiety all of the time and we don't even know why or what it's focused on or where it's coming from. It's just this low key generalized anxiety that's always in our lives. So why are we so anxious? Why is this such a problem for INFJs and INFPs? Most of my clients and students tell me I've always been this way. Even when I was a little kid, I was anxious. I was really anxious about the first day of school, going to school at all. I've always been really anxious in friend groups. I've always been really anxious in workplaces. So for many INFJs and INFPs, for as far back as we can remember, we've been anxious. That's what I hear. I'm just an anxious person. It's just the way I am. Very few of us connect our anxiety to our high sensitivity. INFJ and INFP personality types are highly sensitive to energy. And this is guaranteed across the board. If you are an INFJ personality type or you are an INFP personality type, you are highly sensitive to energy. So that means the energy of other people's emotions your own emotions, energy of groups. If you are in the workplace, if you're in a classroom, right? The energy of all the other people around you. Energy of communication. So a text that comes through on your phone, emails you read, the news. This is really important. If you're reading toxic news, bad news, if you're caught up in the never ending news cycle with the media, that energy, you're very highly sensitive to that energy. The energy of different locations, cities and towns, or different buildings like hospitals, prisons, certain people's houses, right? We're sensitive to all different forms of energy, energy in general. Our energy field is more open and it's more porous than that of other people. That's why we are so highly sensitive to all of these different types of energy. So everything comes in. And when we push ourselves to be normal, we end up overrunning our boundaries when it comes to energetic sensitivity. So we stay at the party for hours when we know we should only be at the party for half an hour or maybe not even at all on that day. Or we will work long hours at the office. A lot of INFJs and INFPs are overachievers and so we will put in more hours than we need to. And a lot of times we're in an office that has an open office plan. So we're around our coworkers all day long for eight to 12 hours at a time, which is way too much. Or we socialize too much. We push ourselves to have a very big social life. One of my INFP clients said to me the other day, I finally realized late in life, I don't want a big social life. I want a big creative life. This is an epiphany that many INFJs and INFPs come to later in life, that we don't want this big social life, but we've been going along with it because we thought it was expected of us or we do too much. We try to take on too much, our to-do list is too long, we try to run too many errands in one day. Any of these things can deplete us and when we become depleted, we are more vulnerable to outside energies. That means when we become depleted, stressed out, burnt out, low energy, our energy field becomes even more porous and then more outside energy can come in. Now, unfortunately, most INFJs and INFPs do push themselves to the limits and past our limits all the time. And then we're flooded with energy from every side. This is energetic overwhelm. 
This is when you are entirely flooded by outside energies coming in, energy from groups, the news, other people, your workplace. It's all flooding in on you and it doesn't belong to you. None of this energy belongs to you, but it's flooding in on you and it's taking up space in your energy field and we can't process it all. We can't hold it all and we definitely can't process it all, but most of us don't know how to let it pass through and we don't know how to clear it. We don't know how to release it. So we end up holding a bunch of energy that is not ours and that is also usually chaotic and agitated. Now it would be one thing if you were going into a Zen meditation center and you were flooded with all sorts of calm and peaceful energy, but that's not usually what happens. You're in your workplace, you're in your classroom, you're in your family group. There's a lot of different personalities, sometimes strong personalities, personalities with psychological conflicts. There's conflict within the group. There's conflict within the relationships and the emotions that are being expressed. And you're getting all that chaotic and agitated energy. You're holding on to a bunch of that. So it will feel highly emotional and intense. And we end up reactive and emotional ourselves and we end up anxious. We end up with all the anxiety. So this is the key. The key is to understand that you are highly energetically sensitive. You cannot help it. You cannot change it. And I work with clients and students on this all the time where people say, well, isn't there something I can do? And shouldn't I visualize the shield of white light? And maybe I can desensitize myself to it. Some of those things can contribute to things feeling a little bit better for you, but you're never going to be able to change the core of who you are. And the core of who you are is that you are extremely energetically sensitive. So because you can't change this, you have to work with it. You have to acknowledge it and accept it. And you have to design your lifestyle around it. So that means you cannot go to social events for hours and hours and hours. You can still go, but you can't shut down the party. You can't be there for four hours, five hours, six hours, a lot of times even two hours. Open office plans are going to be hard for you. Even if you have noise canceling headphones, even if you have a cubicle around you so you can't physically see the other people, any sort of open office plan is still gonna be hard for you. Working from home is gonna be the best fit, hands down. You're gonna to need to take more rest breaks than other people. You most likely will need to take a nap during the day. You need transition time between activities. You need that little buffer. Obviously, you're gonna need more alone time than other people, and alone time means total alone time. You're gonna need solitude and peace and quiet. You also will need to cry more often than other people, and there's nothing wrong with you for doing this. It doesn't mean you're depressed. It doesn't mean that you can't control your emotions. A lot of the time, crying is a really great way that empaths and INFJs and INFPs release emotion. So if you feel a cry coming on, a tightness in your chest, or maybe a tightness in your throat, go to the bathroom, right? Go for a walk around the city block. Go somewhere you can be somewhat private. Go to your car if you're at the office. Um, but lock yourself in your car, lock yourself in a stall, and let yourself cry because you're releasing energy. That's what you're actually doing. You're releasing energy. Sometimes it's yours. It's your own emotional energy. A lot of the time it's not. It's someone else's. You also need a creative outlet, and you need a creative outlet more than other people. You need creative self-expression. This is one of the main ways that INFJs and INFPs process and release emotional energy and energy that is not ours through creativity. You may need an unconventional job and unconventional relationships where you can work around these things, you can work with these things, and most importantly, you can express that these things are going on for you to other people who understand and won't look at you like you're crazy or treat you like you're crazy. You might also need an unconventional living situation. Maybe you have a partner, but you don't live with them. Uh, maybe you have a roommate, but you have very firm ground rules in place for peace and quiet hours. You need to do these sorts of things to put in boundaries that fit your unique energy needs. Because once you're no longer in energy overwhelm all the time, the anxiety will lessen. And I always tell my clients and students that half of them believe me, half of them have a really hard time believing me, but I promise you if you really put in these boundaries around your energy and you protect yourself from this energy overwhelm, the anxiety will lessen over time. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, subscribe. That stuff really helps the channel and I really appreciate 
I really appreciate it. And thank you all so much for tuning in today. Please also subscribe to my newsletter. I send out tons of stuff for INFJ and INFP personality types, book recommendations, classes and courses. I do a ton of those uh, videos, other workshops from other people all sorts of things, lots of resources. So please sign up for my newsletter and thanks so much for tuning in today. I'll see you next time.